Welcome to part two of Let's Play Beneath Nightmare Castle by Peter Darville Evans. At the end of the last part, I was about to read paragraph 179. Here we go. You survey your chamber with a cautious eye. It looks clean and comfortable. You search beneath the mattress and behind the door. Nothing. You secure the door with its strong iron bolt. Crossing to the window, you slowly unlatch and push open one of the heavy wooden shutters. Uh, the night is completely silent. You step out onto a small balcony. It would only, um, it would be only a jump down to the street, and you could clamber back easily. What will you do next? If you want to drop to the street and explore the town, turn to 68. If you would rather go up the hill to Neuberg Keep, turn to 106. If you decide to return to your room, secure the shutters, throw off your cloak and boots, and go to bed, turn to 372. Okay, we are going to um, return to our room, secure the shutters, and throw off our cloak and boots and go to bed and turn to 372. Off we go. You wake up. What time is it? It is still dark. No daylight fills the cracks in the shutters. You shudder as you remember you were dreaming. A terrible nightmare of horrors lurking in dark places deep below the ground. And then, like an echo of your dream, an appalling yelping rends the quiet of the night right outside your window. Silence follows, and then the sound of a cumbersome creature slinking away. You lie awake, but hear nothing more. Eventually, you sleep again. Centre 245. Um, you eat an early breakfast in the common room of the Southern Star. It is a hearty meal brought to you by the innkeeper's wife. You regain up to four points of stamina if you have been wounded. Do I need that? No. Now, after paying the innkeeper, you have five gold pieces remaining in your purse. Record this on your adventure sheet. Okay, finally we find out how much gold we have. So, uh, from very little to five. <clears throat> um, you return to your room to collect your sword and backpack, and then step out into the market square. The sky is leaden, and the southern star's name board clatters to and fro in the gusty, drizzly wind. If you decide to go straight to Neuberg Keep, turn to 289. If you want to walk about the town, turn to 137. Okay, we're going to walk about the town and turn to 137. There is no market today. The square is empty except for a few grim-faced townspeople who scurry across the cobbles. You spot a notice board nailed to a post between the stocks and a horse trough. Uh, I'll, say that again. I'll say that again. You spot a notice board nailed to a post between the stocks and a horse trough. You walk over to it and find that, among proclamations about the permitted prices for meat pies, there is a tattered map flapping in the wind. It is a plan of the town. Okay, there it is. So we have Neuberg Keep, East Gate, Market Square, Riverside Quarter, Merchants Quarter, Bridge Street, and Temple Quarter. Okay. Which part of Neuberg do you want to explore? If you go north to the Merchant's Quarter, turn to 32. If you go east to the Temple Quarter, turn to 195. If you go west, towards the wharves and warehouses at the riverside, turn to 90. Okay, we're going to go to the, uh, the Temple Quarter, uh, which is east, and go to 195. Here we are. Now, the uh, the Temple Quarter of Neuburg is one of the oldest parts of the little town, and the most peaceful. It contains a number of walled residences, as well as the fairly humble shrines and temples to the northern gods that the ancestors of the Neubergers brought with them when they settled this area by force several, sh uh, ugh, several centuries ago. Sorry about that. Um, the newest and grandest temples, dedicated to the currently fashionable gods and goddesses of commerce and farming, Occupy large parks along the magnificent New Wall Street. From here, narrower avenues climb the lower slopes of Castle Hill 
uh, and provide access to the smaller and older shrines and temples. You find that walking up these winding avenues is like travelling backwards in time into the history of Neuburg and its once barbaric peoples. But as you climb up past the ever more dilapidated temples of ever more ancient and forgotten cults, you begin to despair of finding anything useful in this part of the town. You head for an unusually grand building that looks as if it is the oldest temple of all, um, but as you approach you see that it is virtually derelict and apparently deserted. If you want to press on and visit this last temple, turn to 322. If you would rather turn back to the centre of town, turn to 108. Okay, there it is. Okay, we're going to visit this last temple and turn to 322. Uh, the ruined temple is set on a rocky outcrop halfway up Castle Hill. The path to it is steep and narrow, and you can almost feel the watching presence of the ominous windowless edifice as you clamber up towards it. Uh, the dark stone facing of the temple is pitted and crumbling, but a long line of enormous grim-faced statues of weapon-wielding kings and queens is still standing. The only entrance is a small dark hole in the middle of this line of guardians. Standing in the doorway, apparently dozing, is a, is a wizened old man. If you decide to approach the old man, turn to 47. If you would rather hide in the rocks and watch the temple entrance, turn to 144. Okay, um, we're going to hide in the rocks and watch the temple entrance and turn to 144. You have been crouched in a crevice between clammy boulders for quite some time and you are getting cold and stiff. The old man has not moved. You are beginning to realise that concealing yourself in this pile of rocks was a waste of time. When you hear, I'll say, I'll say that again. You are beginning to realise that uh, concealing yourself in this pile of rocks was a waste of time when you hear noises from behind you back down the path. You extricate yourself from among the boulders and head cautiously downhill. You follow the path away from the ruined temple for several minutes and then come face to face with one of the southern warriors and the strange animal um, that, he, that he is holding on a leash. The animal looks something like a low-bellied tracking dog, but it has a white, hairless, distended body, sharp talons on all four paws, and a face that looks distressingly humid, humid, uh, human, sorry, uh, except for the elongated nose that terminates in a snuffling, trumpet-shaped orifice. On seeing you, the swordsman utters a guttural cry. Uh, the swordsman utters a guttural cry, draws his weapon and releases the unpleasant beast. It howls and races towards you. Um, you have to fight it, and if you win, you will then have to fight the swordsman. Snuff Hound, skill 5, stamina 4. Southern Swordsman, skill 6, stamina three, No, 5, sorry, I couldn't read that. Yeah, that's a... Is that a 5? No, yes, yeah, definitely a 5. Yeah. Um, okay, so... If you kill them both, you hurry back to the temple to see the old man, then the 263. Okay, so snuff hound first. Yeah, so we're doing it one at a time because it says if you win, you will then have to fight the swordsman. Okay, so snuff hound 5 4. Five and four. And then Southern Swordsman. Uh, six, five. Is that? Okay. Okay, our skill is 12, isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay, so let's deal with the Snuff Hound. Okay, five plus three is eight. I get uh, 20, so 8 to 20. Puts him down to 2, or it down to 2. Um, 5 plus 7 is 12. I get 22, so 12 to 22. That means I win. That's the end of Mr. Snuffhound. Okay, so now we're doing the, uh, the Southern Swordsman. 
um, skill 6. So 6 plus 6 is 12. I get 18. So 12 to 18. Down to 3. I shan't waste a, uh, a luck point on this. You said magic point, but luck point. Um, 6 plus 11 is 17. I get 20. So 17 to 20. Down to 1. 6 plus 2 is 8. I get 14. So 8 to 14. I just got two twos in a row. What's the probability of that happening? Well, getting a two from rolling two dice is 1 out of 36. So it's 1 out of 36 squared. So it's 1 over 6 to the fourth. The probability of which is 1 out of 1,296. There we go. Uh, rolling two uh, twice in a row is 1 out of 1,296. So pretty unlikely. So that was quite something. Anyway, um, that's the end of the Southern Swordsman. So therefore he is dead. Um, yeah, so that's that. Let's get rid of the buzzing. Should there be any? Yes, yes, yes. Good. Rightio. Um, if you kill them both, you hurry back to the temple to see the old man. Tender 263. 263, here we come. As you approach the forbidding temple entrance, the old man begins to walk unsteadily to meet you. Although he looks as ancient as the, tem uh, as the temple statues, he has brilliant blue eyes that assess you keenly. His voice, too, has no hint of frailty, and you are sure you recognise it from somewhere. You have just destroyed some of the vermin that are infecting this town. My thanks to you, my friend. I am Hugh, Neuberg's sole remaining priest of Oiden. On behalf of the great lord of battle and madness, please accept this gift for slaying our enemies. Uh, Hugh hands you a small stoppered, stoppered, sorry. Uh, Hugh hands you a small stoppered bottle and adds, this is a potion of berserk rage. After you have consumed it, you must fight your next battle to the death uh, and berserker strength will flow in your veins. Record this potion on your adventure sheet. You may use it once only at any time except during a fight. Once you have drunk it, your skill will increase by four points for the duration of your next fight only. Okay, brilliant. Um, now, it doesn't state uh, that... Um, it can go over my initial, so it's pretty useless because I'm already at maximum skill. Uh, but I will note that I have it anyway. So, Potion of Berserk Rage. So, plus four to skill. But yeah, I can't really use it because my skill is at maximum. I imagine it's for if you have skill of like seven, no, uh, eight or lower because then you can put it up to uh, 12 or lower anyway um yes it's pretty useless um hugh continues i think you may be the warrior i seek please enter the temple you can rest eat and and talk further if you accept this invitation turn to 398 if you'd rather retrace your steps and explore another part of town turn to 108 okay we're going to accept the invitation Oh, I just uh, should have noted down about the potion. Plus for the skill for one fight only. Um, drink before a fight. There we go. Let's do that. There we go. Okay. Um, okay. Um, yeah, so we're going to accept this invitation and therefore turn to 398. Here we go. Oh, I've done Vault of the Vampire. Yeah, that was a good book. I haven't done Crypt of the Sorcerer yet, though. Anyway, um, Hugh leads you into a circular hall where he genuflects at the trunk of a spindly white branch tree that twists upwards from the centre of the stone floor. He then ushers you into a cramped side chamber. You sit on a low stool and find Hugh standing beside you, holding a knife to your throat. Be still and listen, he hisses. 
I rescued you from the dungeon of the East Gate because I suspect you may be the warrior that Oiden has foretold will arrive to challenge the evil in this town. If you are the prophesied hero, you have uh, you have with you a valuable treasure that links you to Neuburg. Before I continue, I'll just say it really annoys me when people say prophesized. It's not prophesized. That's not a word. It's prophesied. I've even heard a newsreader um, say prophesized. I mean, look at that word. There's only one S in it. It's prophesied. It's as simple as that. It really is. Anyway, you must donate the treasure to this temple in order to obtain Oiden's assistance. If you are indeed the chosen one, give me the item now. Neuberg's peril increases hourly. Concealed in your belt, you have a jewel-encrusted gold ring given to you many years ago by Baron Thaldur. It is your most valued possession. Uh, Hugh turns away. Will you offer him Baron Thaldur's ring? Turn to 344. Say that you have no such treasure. Turn to 191. Or attack him with your sword. Turn to 86. Okay, we're going to offer him the ring. So let's turn to 344. It's not in our equipment because we weren't told we have it, but the, the paragraph tells us that we do have it, so that's that. The old priest cannot disguise his joy as he beholds the gem encrusted gold ring resting on the palm of your hand. He snatches it from you and exults. Um, just as Oiden foretold, Neuberg has found its champion at last. My friend, I can help to prepare you for the trials you must endure, but first I suggest you fortify yourself with a square meal. Follow me. Surprisingly, the temple is stocked with provisions. You eat well in a cavernous kitchen. You can restore up to four points of stamina, and you may put in your backpack enough food for another three meals. Okay, so I don't need the stamina boost, but I do need the provisions. So let's put the three provisions in our provisions thing, and that's that. So enough for three uh, for another three meals. If you do so, add them to your adventure sheet. While you eat, Hugh gives you information. Turn to twenty-two. Okie dokie. I am older than I look, my young friend, although you may not think it possible, uh, Hugh tells you. I helped to build this temple, and I know why it was built here and which evil forces it was intended to contain. Many legends tell of the clashes of armies, the slaughter and the sacrifice that took place when the ancestors of these towns folk drove the southern hordes out. The stories do not dwell on the unseen side of that conflict, uh, uh, the struggle between the priests of Oiden and Zakaz, the accursed arch, arch uh, uh, the accursed archmage of the despicable gods of Zagula. Zakaz was not destroyed, but his earthly form was sundered and his spirit sealed deep beneath the earth. This temple was constructed over one of the entrances to those subterranean chambers. Neuberg Keep was built to guard the other. The seals beneath this building are still intact, but I begin. Uh, but I began to worry when Baron Tholder announced his intention to visit the infernal city of Zagula. When he returned with a retinue of southern soldiers, I was displeased, and when it became clear that leading the soldiers was a mysterious wizard whom none in Neuburg has yet seen, my fears were confirmed. Zakaz is stirring. He may already have material form. I cannot guess what he will be like or what he will do after so many centuries in limbo. Turn to a hundred. The old priest of Oiden continues his, exp his explanation. If Zakaz is resurrected and restored to his ancient powers, Neuberg and all its people will be helpless before his vengeful sorcery. I shudder to imagine the terror and despair he will inflict. However, he can be defeated and imprisoned again, especially while he is still weak. His physical form can be destroyed by the sword of a mighty warrior such as you, and he and his minions can be weakened by the talisman of Loth. Unfortunately, the talisman is missing. A week ago, I sent Cernic, my fellow priest, to explore the keep. He has not returned, and I cannot contact him, although I think he is still alive. You must go to the keep and try to find the talisman of Loth before you descend into the lower caverns. Do not enter the castle by the main gate. It is heavily guarded. There is a little known side entrance that you will find if you turn to the right before you reach the main gate. I can give you no more information, but if you wish to undertake the ordeal, Oiden may yet bestow gifts upon you. If you want to try the ordeal, turn to 54. If you would rather get on with your quest, turn to 368. Okay. 
we would actually uh, we would actually rather get on with our quest and turn to 368. Uh, the old priest leads you to the door of the temple and bids you farewell. There is little, po uh, there is little point in delaying your perilous quest. Somewhere in Neuburg is a broken fragment of a once potent weapon, and I would not be at all surprised if it were buried among the wares of some curio dealer. The merchant's quarter is nothing but a den of thieves. Avoid the riverside; it is an unsavoury place. Return to the centre of town and go to face the dangers of the keep. Oiden's blessings go with you. Turn to one hundred eight. Okay, here it is, nearly, there we are. Having returned to the market square, you can now explore any part of Neuburg that you have not already visited. Do you choose to make for the Merchant's Quarter, 10 to 32, the Riverside area, 10 to 90, or Neuburg Keep, 10 to 289? Okay, we're going to go to the Merchant's Quarter and 10 to 32. Here we are. You stroll northwards along Bridge Street until the old stone bridge and the misty fields beyond the river are in sight. In this part of town, at least, things seem normal enough. All the shopkeepers have brought their wares out onto the street, which is reverberating with cries of fresh fruit and salted sea fish and curios from the mystic south and swords sharpened here among scores of others. Crowds of townsfolk are bustling among the merchant's stalls and trying to shelter from the drizzle beneath the brightly coloured awnings. You decide to retrace your steps in order to buy some provisions and, as you mingle with the throng outside a general grocery shop, you suddenly feel that you are being watched or followed. Test your luck. If you are lucky, turn to 390. If you are unlucky, turn to 171. Okay, so our luck score is currently 12, so we're guaranteed to be lucky, but I'll do it anyway. Okay, so that's less than or equal to 12, but we have to lose a luck point. There we go. And uh, lose any buzzing if we have any. Um, so we were lucky and we're turning to 390. Okay. Um, two robed warriors, looking impassive and very out of place, are standing in a clear space on a nearby street corner, and they are staring straight at you. But you don't have time to worry about them. You glance down and see a hand closing around the purse hanging from your belt, and another hand holding a short, a short sharp knife about to cut the drawstring. You spin round, drawing your sword, and face the sneak thief. It is a waif-like little girl, no more than nine years old. You are, at a, you are at a loss to know what to do, and the girl lunges at you with a knife. You are taken by surprise, and she cuts you. Lose one point of stamina. You must fight her. Okay, so let's lose a point of stamina. Takes me down to 22. Okay, so we're now fighting Gamine Thief. Uh, skill, I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, skill 4, stamina 3. After one round of combat, the girl escapes into the crowd. Uh, let's do that now then. Um, so Gamin Thief 4-3. That's the same uh, skill and stamina as one of the six swordsmen we fought in the last video. Anyway, so for, uh, her first. So 4 plus 9 is 13. I get 22. So 13 to 22. That means I win. She's down to one. So that's that, though. So she's gone. Um, after one round of combat, the girl escapes into the crowd. Just lose the buzzing if there is any. There we go. There probably isn't, but I can't risk it because it annoys me. It mucks up the video a bit. Anyway, after one round of combat, the girl escapes into the crowd. Looking around, you realise that the two warriors are no longer in sight. Do you want to try to follow the girl, 10 to 358, or will you continue your quest for food, 10 to 149? Um, we're going to continue our quest for food, um, and therefore turn to 149. There we go. 
Um, you return to the grocery uh, the grocery stall and survey and survey. Right, I'll start again. You return to the grocery stall and survey the array of cold meat pies and small loaves of crusty bread, temptingly displayed in the open air. A single gold piece will buy enough for three meals. Or if you're a if you are feeling desperate or daring, you might be able to. You might be able to filch enough for one meal while no one is looking. If you want to buy three meals, turn to 383. If you try to steal one, turn to 229. If you would rather leave the merchant's quarter of Neuburg, you can go to any part of the town you have not already visited. You could either make your way down to the river, turn to 90, walk across town to the temple quarter, turn to 195, or go up Castle Hill to Neuburg Keep, turn to 289. Okay, we're going to buy three meals, so let's do that now. That puts um, our gold down to four, and puts the provisions up to six. There we go, that's handy. Um, Okay, all right, we're turning to 383 then because we because uh, we bought three meals. Here we are. Best meat pies this side of Kelther, the burly shopkeeper assures you as he wraps your selection in a scrap of parchment. You hand over one gold piece and make and place the three meals in your backpack. Make a note of this exchange on your adventure sheet and turn to 280. Okay, I've already done that. Should have done that. Um, now, really, not before. Never mind. Doesn't matter. Anyway, um, it just makes the book flow um, not as well. Anyway, as you make your way through the crowds back towards the market square, the market square, you notice a tiny rickety stall that appears to be laden with junk, rags, and useless knickknacks. The proprietor, also tiny and rickety, is small and bearded enough to be a dwarf, but then again, he's ugly enough to be a goblin. He notices you staring at him. You glance away and see the two robed swordsmen again, still shadowing you at a distance. You look up at Neuberg Keep, shrouded in grey mist above the rooftops, and when you look again at the aged stall holder, he is smiling at you in a curiously knowing way. He beckons you with one spindly digit. If you have money to spend, my friend, he says, I have an antique curio which may help you. If you are having difficulties with our southern neighbours... If you are interested in buying a piece of old junk from this street trader, turn to 129. If you have no money or would rather not spend what little you have, you continue on to the market square, turn to 237. Okay, we're interested in buying a piece of old junk, so we're going to turn to 129. Here we are. With much gesturing, the uh, the little old being invites you into a tumble-down lean-to hovel. <coughs> excuse me, um, behind his stall. Inside inside the windowless shack, you can hardly move for bric-a-brac. You can hardly move for bric-a-brac. Rusty weapons, broken furniture, and cracked pots take up virtually all the available space. Pausing only to light a candle, the stall holder begins to rummage with surprising energy in a particularly cluttered corner. With a triumphant cry, he pulls something from beneath a pile of rags and brings it towards you. It looks like a small garden fork. It is very rusty and it has no handle. You begin to wonder whether the old stall holder is demented. You are even more worried when he demands three gold pieces for it. If you want to pay him, deduct three gold pieces from your adventure sheet and turn to 14. If you want to waste no more time on this transaction, you leave the hut and continue towards the market square. Turn to 237. Okay, we do want to pay him, so we're going to deduct three gold pieces and turn to 14. That puts us down to one gold piece. And now we're turning to 14. 14, here we come. The old goblin, for by now you are fairly sure that's what he is, takes your money, inspects it by the light of the candle, bites each coin in turn, and then throws the coins over his shoulder to add to the heaps of, deb uh, of debris. Or debris, whatever one of them. He hands you the broken fork, and you can see that it is the head of a weapon, a three pronged spear of blue metal, with vicious barbs and intricate inscriptions 
overlaid with copious amounts of rust. Even cleaned up, it won't be of much use without its shaft, the goblin tells you, but if you can find its handle, it should make a prodigiously powerful weapon against those southern scum and their horrible pets. I've kept that spearhead since before most of the buildings in this town were built. I was told it was broken in the battle fought on Castle Hill itself before there even was a Neuburg or a keep. The southerners were defeated and fled. The legends say that their unnatural allies were swallowed up by the ground on which they stood, and that the spear shaft went with them. They were mortally afraid of that spear, the stories say. You put the spearhead in your backpack and make your way to the market square, still wondering whether you have wasted your money. Agenda 237. Okay, so <clears throat> we have a blue spearhead. Oops, yeah, we did that. There we go. Okay, fantabulous. Uh, next, um, I presume that's the, uh, uh, the, uh, the goblin. There we go. Anyway, turn to 237. Um... By the time you arrive <clears throat> at the wet and windswept market square, you have managed to elude your shadows. Your adventures in the merchant's quarter have not provided many answers to the puzzle of what is going on in Neuberg, so where will you try next? You can go to any part of the town that you have not already visited. If you want to go down to the riverside wharves, turn to 90. If you decide to venture up Castle Hill to visit Neuberg Keep, turn to 289. If you walk into the temple quarter, turn to 195. Okay, we're going to visit Neuburg Keep and turn to 289, which is 17 squared. Uh, 17 seventeens. Anyway, uh, the road winds up Castle Hill towards the brooding bulk of Neuburg Keep. The few townspeople you meet shake their heads and divert their eyes. They, ob uh, they obviously believe you are either rec recklessly brave or completely senseless. The path becomes steeper, the houses are fewer and are little more than stone-fronted caves, and the black towers of the keep's curtain wall and the black towers of the keep's curtain wall loom above you. Uh, the path you are uh, on which you are appears to lead directly to the castle's main gate. A main gatehouse. There is a smaller overgrown path that leads off to the right. If you want to stay on the main path, turn to 2. If you would rather take the right hand trail, turn to 95. Okay, we're going to take the right hand trail because that's what that um, old man said. So, um, right hand trail, here we come, 95. Hacking at brambles with your sword, you follow the path around the hillside in the shadow of the battlements. The path veers to the left and disappears into a clump of bushes at the base of the wall. You push aside the prickly branches and discover a small door, which you have some difficulty in opening as there is just as much undergrowth on the other side. You cut your way down a flight of stone steps and find yourself in an untended kitchen garden. Garden. The vegetable patches, herb beds and fruit trees are wildly out of control and it is impossible to see across the garden. Um, you can make out that the garden is square, is surrounded by walls and has the remains of a gravel path around its edge. You are at the midpoint of one side. Will you turn right, turn to 175, or left, turn to 275? We're going to, we're going to turn uh, right and turn to 175. Whoops, wrong one, 175 wanted. There we go. And we will read paragraph 175 in the next video. So, at the start of the next video. So, let's just say one paragraph 175, which is quite close to the previous next paragraph, which is interesting. Um, and, um, yeah, so in the next video, we'll decide, or rather, we'll read this paragraph. So, thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this part. And goodbye.